Well, welcome back. Our topic today is the law of signs. So before we dive into what the law of signs is, let's take a look and compare these two triangles. So first off, go ahead and draw this first triangle in your notebook and we'll label the sides 6, 8, and X. Now notice there's something very different about this triangle and this triangle. Hopefully you're saying to yourself, I can easily get the other side because this is a right triangle. And if I know two sides of a right triangle, I can use, easily use the Pythagorean theorem to get the missing side of a right triangle. And up until today, all we've dealt with in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 are right triangles. So this is a big day for us. We are moving out of the world of right triangles, and we will be able to find the side of any triangle. And that's where the law of signs comes in. So you'll notice in this triangle, where our, our little friend here looks perplexed, how the heck are we going to do that? You cannot use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's just make a note. Cannot use your Pythagorean theorem. Okay, because this is not a right triangle. So I'm hoping this is something you know we've talked about a little bit. Basically, we need to talk about our ratio of sides to angles. And these are going to work together as partners here. Side A, you'll notice, is across from angle A, or opposite it. So again, if this is angle A, you should go across to side A. Angle B, you should go across to side B. Angle C, across to side C. And just knowing that's half the battle with the law of signs. So here's the hint when you can use the law of signs. So let's go ahead and make a note here. If a problem refers to two angles and two sides, we are going to use what we call the law of signs. So let's be clear, two sides and two angles. Are you ready for it? Here it comes. Here is the law of signs. So mark this in your notebook carefully, box it in, star it. We want to memorize this law of signs. So it's sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. Or you can flip these fractions upside down. You could put side A over sine A, B over sine B, C over sine C. So we don't care which one you use, just memorize one of them and get them straight. Notice on top is all your uppercase letters, so these represent your angles. On the bottom is all your lowercase letters, so these represent your sides. Okay, so again, use the first one, use the second one, it doesn't matter to us, but make sure the trig goes with the angle and the side is the other one. Now one more important note that we want to mark down is you're not going to use all three of these at the same time. You are only going to use two of the ratios at once. So what do I mean by that? Well, you're not going to use A, B, and C all at the same time because you only have two sides and two angles. So you might use sine A over A and sine B over B, or you might use sine A over A and sine C over C, but you won't use all three. All right, here we go. Example one. In triangle ABC, right off the bat, they don't say right triangle, so don't draw yourself a right triangle. We are moving above and beyond that. So we're just going to draw any random triangle. A, B, C. Okay, uppercase letters again are the angles. Side A measures 8, and remember A is across from angle A, so I know this is side A and that gets an 8. Angle A measures 30, so I can put my 30 degrees in there. Angle C measures 55. Find side C to the nearest tenth of an integer. So I'm finding this side. If you want to put an X there, that's fine. To the nearest tenth. So we'll just make sure we round in the end. So here we go. All you're going to say to yourself is you have two sides and two angles. So that's telling you to use the law of signs. All right. So remember we said we're only going to use two of those ratios at a time. So I know angle A and side A, so I'm going to say that's the sine of angle A over side A equals, and I know angle C and I'm finding side C. So I'm going to say the sine of C over side C. 
So I'm just using these two. Notice I don't know anything about B. And like I said previously, you're only going to use two at a time. Now let's plug in what we know. The sine angle A is 30 and side A is 8 equals the sine of 55 and side C is what I'm looking for, so I'm going to put an X there. All right, at this point, I'm just going to cross multiply. And let me grab colors here. I'm going to multiply these two together, and I just want to be clear that you're always going to write this single term in front. So it should say 8 sine of 55 equals, when I go this way, again, put that single term in front, x sine of 30. And now I want to get x by itself, so my goal is to divide both sides by the sine of 30. That'll cancel those, and I'll get x equals this lovely answer. And this is straight to your calculator. Um, there's one note I want to make, and that your calculator should be in degree mode. So if you just want to hit your mode button and double check it, Another piece of information, those of you with that updated calculator, you have that wonderful fraction tool, and if you hit that, you can just easily type this in, and I suggest using that if you've got that new updated calculator. And I get x equals 13.1 to the nearest tenth. And there you have it. You did trig that wasn't on a right triangle, using the law of sines. Let's try another one. Number two, in triangle ABC, so let's stop and draw a random triangle, not a right triangle. Label it ABC, doesn't matter which ones you call ABC. Angle B equals 80. Angle C measures 34 degrees. Side A is 16. Find the length of B to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to put an X here. All right, now they try to be a little sneaky here. Notice, you know angle B and you're looking for side B, so those go across from each other. That works out perfectly. Now, you have angle 34, but do you know the, the side across from it? And hopefully you're saying no. And you have side 16, but you don't know the angle across from it either. Well, you have to figure one of them out. And hopefully you're saying you can easily get this angle here. What do you know about degrees in a triangle? Well, remember, they all add up to 180 degrees. So if I take my 180 degrees, and I take out 80, and I take out 34, I believe, if I did my math right, I should get 114 degrees. And that's what I'm going to call this angle. So I had to do a little bit of math before I could actually set up my law of sines. Now I can say I have this side and the angle across. Remember, you want those partners, side and angle across, side and angle across. All right, now we can set up the law of sines. So notice I'm using the A's and the B's. So I'm going to say the sine of A over side A equals the sine of B over side B. Even though I knew something about C, there just wasn't enough information. Plug in what we know. So I'm going to take the sine of 114 over its side, which is 16, and the sine of 80 over its side, which is x. Carefully cross multiply. So I've got x sine of 114 equals 16 sine of 80. Okay, so again, notice that single digit should be in front when you cross multiply. And if I want x by itself, I'm going to divide by the sine of 114. And if you've got that fraction update, you're typing this in in that fraction bar, you can't screw it up. Um, be very careful. And I believe it said to the nearest tenth. I get x equals 17.2. All right, now we found two sides. Let's try an angle problem. In the diagram, a equals 55, c equals 20, and the measure of angle a equals 110. Find angle c to the nearest degree. So again, so far we've done two sides. We're going to find an angle now. So let's get our triangle ABC drawn. Lowercase a is 50 si 55, so they're talking about a side. Lowercase c is 20, so again, they're talking about a side. Angle A is 110, 
and find the measure of angle C. So that's where my X is going. All right, notice you have the side angle across, the corresponding partners, side angle across. So that's your setup for law of sines. So I'm going to say the sine of A over side A equals the sine of C over side C. So I've got sine of A, which is 110, over 55 equals sine X over 20. Now this one's different, all right? We have sine X instead of X being by itself. So we're going to continue the same way. We're going to cross multiply. So I've got 20 sine of 110 equals 55 sine X. Okay, now, I just want to be clear. This sine X is attached together. You can't break it up. So the only thing I can do is divide both sides by 55. So grab your calculator, divide that, and you should get a pretty small decimal every time. I've got point three four. Oh goodness, one seven zero. Blah blah blah. It goes on forever. Now notice I did not solve for x. What's left over here is the sine of x. Now here's the big step. We did this the very first day we did trig, and it was a review from Algebra 1. If you want to get x by itself to get rid of sine, you have to take the inverse of both sides. Okay? So what I want you to do is take this value, and you want to store it into alpha a. Okay? Store that ugly number into alpha a. So I should have a equals sine of x. And I'm going to take sine inverse of alpha a to solve for x, and that will kill this sine. Okay, so take the inverse to get the sine. And to the nearest degree, I get x equals 20 degrees. Okay, so take your time there. That's, we did that the first day, um, and you're doing inverse sine. All right, next example. In triangle XYZ, so again, quick sketch. Angle x equals 50. Uh, side x equals 20, uh, side y equals 25, find angle y. All right, notice we've got the side angle across, side angle across. So that's that law of sines. So they don't use a, b, and c, no big deal. You can use any letters in the world you want. Remember, it's the sine goes with the angle. So I'm going to say the sine of 50 over the side 20 equals the sine of x over its partner side, 25. Remember, just keep the partners together. Angle, side across, angle, side across. Pause it, try it on your own, see if you get the same answer. So I've cross multiplied, I'm dividing by my 20, and when I type this side in, I get two point, whoops, nine, five, seven, blah, 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 blah. Store that into alpha A equals sine x. Remember, you haven't solved for x. You've got sine x. So to get x by itself, you have to take sine inverse of alpha a, and that will get you x. And to the nearest, let's say, whole number, I get 73 degrees. Okay, so double check that. All right, I've got an odd looking one for you. It says in triangle DEF. So let's stop, draw a sketch, D. E, F. Notice they tell me the sine of F, and they tell me the sine of D. And then they tell me side F. Well, I'm going to put side F in right away. That's 24. And they want me to find side D, so I'm going to put an X there. Now notice they didn't give me the angles. They gave me the trig functions. So I'm not actually going to say that's the angle. I'm actually going to write down the sine of D equals 2 fifths, and the sine of um, F there equals one-fifth. And even though it looks ugly, they basically did half the work for you. Let's set up the law of sines. Well, you want the side and the angle across. So I'm going to say that's the sine of f over f equals, I've got d and d, so the sine of d over d. 
Now here's what I mean by they did half the work for you. What is the sine of f? Well, they told us the sine of f is one-fifth. So I'm going to put that on top, divided by f, which is 24, equals the sine of d, which they told you, you don't have to do anything fancy, two-fifths over psi d, which is x. And from this point, I'm just going to cross-multiply. x times one-fifth makes one-fifth x, two-fifths times 24, so I've got 24 times two-fifths. We should be pretty darn good at multiplying fractions now. Remember, just multiplied the tops and bottoms. So I've got one-fifth x equals on top, that's 48 over 5. And now remember, instead of dividing by a fraction, it's easier if you just multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of one-fifth is 5. So just multiply both sides by 5, that kills that, or you can use your calculator. This is 5 over 1, so my 5's cancel, and I get x equals 48. Well, hopefully you're feeling pretty good with the law of sines. Remember, the whole trick is to f oops, find the side, and you want the angle across. All right, we're looking for those partners, side and angle across. So it's the sine of A over side A equals the sine of B over side B. And you're just going to use those two. Well, have a great night, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.